Good day, everybody. Kevin here from the Big Board. So let's have a quick chat about. Oh boy, here we go. Yah Magazine, right? So. Ugh. I was asked whether or not I liked the title, and me being just the you know forthright little chappy that I am, I said no, it sucks, and uh, <laughs> it still sucks, Mark. Now, I got that out off my chest. Let me just say that the article, the from the editor from uh, from Tom uh, Tom Russell, that talks about you know uh, why they called it what they called it, is really cute and. Uh, <laughs> It's taken me a long time to realize, uh, and I've only maybe had you know ten or you know ten or twelve conversations with uh, Mark Walker, but uh, and I've met him once. But uh, he, he really is, however old he is, you know, fifty plus guy. He's a fifty-year-old in a little kid's body, and the sooner that we realize that and accept that for what it is, the better we will off we will be. Because you're not going to get anything mature and serious from him. You're not going to get that happening. Oh boy, I say, we're not we're going to call it Yah. So, Yah Magazine. Uh, first off, a uh, nice uh, weight of paper. It's a, a high gloss cover. It's curious that there's a little uh, border here. I don't really, it doesn't really bother me one way or the other. Uh, the binding is nice. Uh, it doesn't quite sit open, so it's a different, uh, it's not stapled, it's a, it's glued. Uh, so it's a different format than perhaps a GMT magazine or, uh, let's see, and you know, it's the same, exactly the same, in fact, as Battles. And I need to talk about Battles in a second, uh, or maybe another video too. But uh, it's, this is, you know, about 60 pages, I think. 59, 60 pages, so lots of stuff in it, but what's in it, right? Lots of full color stuff. Of course, there's an ad for uh, Mark's uh, Night of Man game, which I'm uh, apparently going to try playing this week, maybe Friday, on Vassal, and we'll see how that is. I'm not a super fan of uh, sci-fi stuff, uh, unless it's super light <coughs> and has minis things go boom. So uh, editorial and then uh, just kind of a two-page spread on the articles that are in the magazine and lots of good stuff in here from uh, lots of different people whose names you may or may not recognize as we go through it and we'll kind of have a look at them. In fact we've got the contributors here that's going to make life e easy. Peter Perler writes his first article in a long time. Uh, Nathan Powell who's a steampunk guru dude. Uh, Gabe Kleinert, don't know him. And Gabriel Jandron is the art director for the magazine. And then John and uh, Alexi write uh, articles for them as well. And uh, the ever vivacious uh, Ania uh, puts in an appearance and writes a, a, a cool little article as well. And I love Ania's uh, little tag here for what uh, her job is. Professional anchor, placer, and lines bender. She's a graphic artist. Love it. All right. <clears throat> so uh, there's an interview with Bill. You pronounce that name, Molineux, something like that. Very uh, well-known, well-regarded uh, uh, rules writer, miniatures game designer, and game designer. Quite enjoyed that. Uh, a review and discussion of the uh, fifth edition of. You guys see that? Okay, fifth edition of uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, very cool. Lots of lots of artwork in this magazine too, and and it's uh, you know you could discuss the formatting of where it goes and how it's positioned, I guess. But uh, I, I generally speaking, I like it. A great review. Uh, yeah, I really enjoyed actually Yanni's uh, write up of uh, Command and Colors Napoleonics. She did a really good job on this. And uh, look, there she is putting her stickers on. She's so sweet and being so look and and. She's really OCD too, just if in case you're wondering. Yes, OCD women. Uh, yes, and there is some great photographs of the game in play. Some ad. Oh, no, this is not an ad. This is a review of the States of Siege series. This was interesting because uh, I've not played any of these games and quite enjoyed reading about them. And I like the gave me a good overview of uh, Ottoman Sunset and uh, the Israeli game. Uh, we're not so interested in the Dawn of the Zed's title, but that's okay. And uh, then uh, there's a scenario for, no, this is uh, 
the attack wing, D&D uh, &D attack wing stuff, uh, minis stuff. People who like that will get all excited about that. I figure uh, I played the Star Wars version, don't need to play anything else. How's that for glib? Now, Alexi writes about Rose to Stalingrad, and that's a camp campaign commander volume uh, one, two, and three. There's three of the games out. There's one on the Punic War and one on the Guadalcanal campaign, Coral Sea stuff. And this system is uh, translated from Spanish, and uh, Vance, uh, is it Vance? It's not Vance. Yeah, Judd Vance has helped me uh, try to learn this game, and even he's thrown, he's rewritten the rules two or three times. And even he has thrown his hands up in the air with the uh, the wishy washiness of the game designer, and uh, so I, my credit to Alexi for finding something uh, awesome in this system. I think the format of the game and the uh, tiles f instead of cards for combat and all this stuff. There's a lot of little things that are wrong with this game. How units are activated. All this sort of stuff. It has huge potential, but it, it's just a, a do not do not waste your money on that bad boy. I got to tell you right there. Boom! Don't uh, don't do it. And they're freaking expensive too. Uh, so Rivet Wars. Uh, look, if you're into this, is a really interesting background article uh, on Rivet Wars and its uh, its genesis and uh, the kind of World War One Rivet Wars thing. Very cool minis. I'm sure guys are going to freak out painting all that sort of stuff. It's awesome stuff. Uh, I enjoyed reading about that. I had not even heard about it, so that was cool. Uh, what is this? Some scenarios for that uh, system. A scenario for D&D Attack Wing starter set with lots of great artwork. Let's do uh, some more scenarios and stuff. Uh, the articles about the, uh, the games that uh, are in here. And that's probably one thing you want to see is the games. And this is a nice, long, well-written article about the the two battles. And we'll talk the Battle of Hastings and the Battle of Stamford Bridge or Stamford Bridge or Stamford Bridge, yeah. And so Shields and Swords is, I think Tom did this, Tom Russell did this, is a uh, combat system basically for the, well, I, I'm going to call it, and I'm going to get yelled at, for the saga era, so for the medieval game player. And it is, but it's a uh, hex and counter based, obviously, and it's literally one, two, three, it's three and a half pages of rules. It's incredibly clear and easy to understand. It's got a nice little sequence of play here. Basically, you have a command phase, a command, a command phase, then you have your action phases, and you do fire, you do horse or ho horse movement. You do the retreat phase because you can't move if you're in a, in a zone of control. You have this shield wall uh, stuff we'll talk about later maybe. And then you have a move phase and a combat phase. Kind of easy, huh? So you've got ranged fire, then uh, movement, some movement, some retreating, uh, and then more movement, and then uh, combat. And it... <clears throat> And for that linear style combat situation, it works really, really well. The and we'll I'll show you the counters and everything. And so that's it. That's the that's the whole game right there. I'm really actually quite surprised at how elegantly put together and well worded everything is. I haven't found any problems with it yet. Now, Stanford Bridge. There's a one page uh, scenario outline, and then uh, Heath, uh, Hastings. Battle of Hastings, and then there's one player aid which has three charts on it, and just an outline of what the different units are, right? And a little sequence of play reminder. And there's only one thing that I thought could possibly, should possibly be on this chart, and that was uh, the uh, combat class modifiers. But other than that, I think it captures everything. And then there's an article uh, that Peter Perler writes about uh, Phil Sabine's uh, ancient system. Right, let's have a quick look at this game. Uh, if you are familiar with the, uh, oh, the Crimean War game that Lock and Load put out in the magazine, you'll, you'll recognize the artwork for this. It's quite pretty. I like the kind of pseudo three-dimensional deals. The dots are telling you where to put your, put your guys. And there's the other map, the Stamford Bridge. Uh, this is representative of a battle from the Viking ages, and this is probably more 
this is Viking ages too, what I would call the early medieval age or whatever the case may be. And then the counters. So the counters are in a separate bag, which is nice when you've got something to store them in. Whoops. So here are the counters. And I would say that I would turn them up the right way and they come out easily as you can see. Okay, so these guys are, I'm gonna call these thinner but larger than the GMT counters but thicker than the one-step games counters. Uh, I had a chance to goof around with the Shining Path game. Uh, and those, those are some thin, kind of flimsy counters. And these will, uh, these are for both battles. These are nicely uh, die cut. And they are, uh, well, it looks like that guy's a little bit, Oh no, that's the arrow. Yeah, so it might be it might be a little offset here with the artwork just on this little section here, but everything else seems to be pretty bang on, as they say, right? So nice little job here. Looking forward to playing this. Uh, we'll see if this is uh, a good introductory war game or whether it's just a uh, a good cheap uh, uh, magazine game, as the case may be, and we'll kind of go for it from there. Um, I'm looking forward to playing these. They look nice, you know. If you look kind of step back and have a look at the map. You go, okay, this is nice, and it's a, it's a glo it's a glossy paper. I'm not sure that I I'm a big fan of the glossy paper, uh, and the map is uh, it's not cardstock. It's a paper map, which is fine. So we will have a play of that and see what it's like. Now I don't know how much this retails for. I probably should have taken the moment to uh, see how much it will retail for. Uh, it's obviously not in the magazine here, so. I'm thinking it's somewhere between 40 and 50 bucks. And I don't and I think if the volume got up on this thing, we could get it down to a more reasonable price. I think it's it's kind of expensive for what you get. And the two battles, not two games, two battles. Uh and uh some good writing and some great artwork and a lovely format. I think it's really really good and I really enjoy the magazine. Uh, I've enjoyed reading it. It was a good hour worth of reading or maybe uh, 45 minutes uh, but you're competing against uh, thing you know in other in-house magazines that are uh, 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 certainly less expensive now one thing I did for instance notice with GMT which was a little annoying uh, because they have such a pool, large pool of um, games you know of course there's a lot of game specific stuff for them so this is more of an industry magazine that has games in it as opposed to a house magazine that has games in it so there's a distinction there so it really needs to kind of fall over into the war diary slash battles magazine uh group of magazines that are out and available and i'm sure there are others counterfact is another one that uh i thought was okay uh what was i going to say about gmt that annoy me oh ten dollars shipping for a $17 magazine, not happy. Anyway, this was good. Mark, thank you for sending me a review copy. Uh, just uh, you know, full disclosure, I did not pay for this. Mark sent me a copy to have it to check it out and let you guys all know about it. Uh, and I think I've given you my fair assessment of it. Uh, there are no weak articles in here. Uh, it was more a, a case of whether or not I was interested in reading about the given topic. You know, I, I don't know Bill from a hole in the ground, and, I don't, and I'm not a particular you know, fan of this kind of era of uh, warfare, so it, that didn't hold my interest so much. But the questions are actually interesting questions. I really enjoyed the D&D &D magazine, uh, D&D &D 5th edition review. Helped me understand uh, a lot more about what the fuss is about with the 5th edition rules and where it fits in the pantheon of all the other rule sets and why there are good things about it, you know? Uh, so that was cool. This was a cool little article too. So anyway, altogether all, all a nice, a nice job on on the on the the magazine, and that's all I got for you. Fifteen minutes for that. Whoa, later.